Okay, if you haven't seen Star Trek Discovery this week, episode 14, there be spoilers here. Hello out there, I'm the oldest nerd. By the end of episode 13, when Burnham grabs the Emperor and transports with her back aboard Discovery, she saves the Emperor's life, but the Emperor is not too happy about this. This and other things uh, we're going to talk about uh, come up in episode 14, where the Emperor is kept a prisoner. Uh, nine months have passed by since the Discovery disappeared into the Mirror Universe, or at least from the point of view of the Federation, where they're boarded by the Admiral and Sarek and uh, their henchmen who are able to make sure everything is safe before they get there. This looks like something that they've done on other starships to make sure that they have a friendly reception. Unlike what I said last week about this, though, where I was thinking maybe uh, Starfleet had become kind of resistance fighters, uh, there's still most of the fleet there. About a third of it is gone, according to what the Admiral mentions. So she takes control of the ship and takes them directly to Starbase One. Uh, they're told that the spore drive, after being able to get back in that uh, great-looking special effect at the end of episode 13, has depleted all of the spores they had left, and so they had to go back with old-fashioned warp drive. Our idea that without the spores, this would be the end of the spore story is not the case. Uh, our um, industrious chief engineer has uh, kept himself a secret stash of mushrooms in which uh, he could replant in order to create more spores. I miss the detail of how exactly that came about, and I have a problem with that. Uh, okay, we've used all our spores. We don't have any spores left. We're not going to be able to make a jump. We had to go warp drive to Starbase 1 and then find it occupied by one of the Klingon houses, and now uh, that we uh, really need to jump in order to uh, take on the Klingons at their home world, oh, I happen to have a jar of mushrooms that we can make into more spores. All we need is a planet with a lot of dirt on it and, and shoot about 16 torpedoes at it, which, uh, you know, did they have that many to plant? Well, however it is, it grew amazingly fast, uh, despite the fact that it took quite some time, and they even mention it in the episode of how long it took to grow the spores aboard the ship. Uh, what makes it different where this planet was? And what did they do that cheated it? Uh, I'm not sure what. I'm thinking maybe that's something that will come back to bite them later. So their plans are to go to Kronos. They are going to go into a cave or volcano or something like that that the Emperor has shared with Burnham. And that's enough to get a plan put together. So uh, Burnham is helping to end the war that she started, in her words, and the Emperor has got some leverage in which to make some kind of negotiation with um, either the Admiral or Sarek. As it turns out, it's Sarek that she negotiates with and says, I want my freedom before I'm going to tell you what to do other than this temporary measure that I have given to Burnham. And her idea is to vaporize the entire planet. Something very un-Starfleet-like, and something they discussed a little bit as saying very un-Starfleet-like. However, desperate times call for desperate measures. My opinion of how this all comes about is that it seems that the Federation just can't fight a war unless they have somebody from the Mirror Universe in it. They had Lorca, who was very successful in getting rid of Klingon incursions, and then nine months later, after he's out of the picture, uh, the entire rest of the Federation can't seem to make any headway. They're getting all the way to Starbase One, which is in orbit around Earth. So, I mean, what do they do there? What do they do with all those phasers and photon torpedoes is my question. So now they've decided what they need to do is to have the Emperor impersonate Captain Giorgio put her back on the bridge, and let her run the ship the same way Lorca did, where everybody can hate her, where everybody can suspect her motives, where she can get something done. I'm not sure what this says for 
the idea of Starfleet right now or the idea of the writers of the show right now. Up until now, I've been very supportive of their ideas that perhaps it's eventually going to write itself, that Lorca might not have been a mirror universe. I was wrong on all these things. And what they keep trying to tell us is that the good folks play fair and lose, and the bad folks don't play fair and win. What does that say about anything? The only other thing that they talked about in the show that is of interest is the relationship between Michael and Ash. Ash is apparently all human now and remorseful. And in his hallway meeting with Stamets, uh, it's, it's fairly certain that uh, not everybody is going to welcome his newfound humanness back or, or whatever he is between human and Klingon, neither or both. It's hard to tell. And it seems that Burnham is going to be the least likely to be accepting of him um, precisely because she had to go through the same shaming, I guess. I, I, I don't get this quite, so I'm not quite sure where they're going to go with it. Are they going to try to rebuild this relationship? Is it going to be this soap opera kind of thing where it's on again, off again? Who knows? A couple of questions remain. Uh, first of all, what has happened to the Prime Universe Lorca? Did he die in the Mirror Universe? Or is he somewhere that just hasn't been found yet? And is he going to show up somewhere to save the day? Or is he ever going to be back? In the After Trek show, um, Jason Isaac said that he really... Uh, uh, didn't have any other role on the show, although he's been known to lie for purposes of maintaining surprises in the show before, so we can't count on that as anything. Also, if the Emperor's idea as portraying Giorgio is to go and vaporize Kronos the way she seems to have suggested to Sarek, uh, is that going to happen? And if it does, if it does, if it's not stopped, how are they going to line this back up with canon? Are they going to have to make another time jump? And if they do, that goes back to an earlier prediction that I made, is that they set history all right by making none of this ever have happened from the beginning of the series. And we're getting to the point to where I'm thinking, that's almost a cheat. That goes back to Bobby Ewing in the shower on Dallas. That entire season didn't happen because it wasn't convenient for us to be able to write our way out of it. Uh, I expect more of this show, and I hope that I'm wrong in this manner, that they are able to settle the score in one more episode and make it believable and make it work. I'd like to hear what you have to say about this. Why not go down to the comments and send me a message? I'd love to see it. Also, if you'd click the like button, that would help us out a lot. Until then, don't go far.